In this video, we're going to be covering a recently added topic in AS level and that is uh, equation of circles. Now, I know you're probably wondering that uh, why do I have coordinate geometry written when I'm covering equation of circles. Now, the reason for that is uh, I just wanted to do a quick revision of coordinate geometry before we started off with the uh, equation of circles. So, uh, some concepts that we have done in O levels also. So, I'm just going to quickly go over and uh, the screenshots of these notes I will post on my Instagram so you guys can go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description box. So, the very uh, the first concept is distance between two points. Again, very important. You guys should know that and I'm sure you do from O levels. So, here's an example. And then midpoint also very important because uh, we'll see how we can connect this concept when we're doing equation of circles. And then the gradient again very important because you need to know um, what exactly do we need to do when we find out the gradient of, when we have a gradient of a certain line we need to find out the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to it or perhaps parallel to it and then collinear points stuff like that so nothing that we haven't done before except that we have this uh, equation of perpendicular bisector which is not very common in O levels. So it is still there but it's not very common. So you know I've written it stepwise that how exactly do you need to find or what exactly do you need to do in order to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector and then there's also an example and most importantly there are a few circle properties that you must remember uh, again nothing we haven't done before with the exception of one property however is that uh, angle opposite to the diameter is always 90 degrees perpendicular from the center of the chord bisects the chord okay it's the perpendicular bisector of the chord radius and tangent meet at 90 degrees and this is something that's very very important and that is if you have two points on the circumference point a and point b so what that means is that the distance from a to o obviously is going to be the same as o to b because the o a o and o b are both the radii but what so what's important here is what i really want to point out is that the movement in terms of x and y will also be the same so for example the distance the if you want to go from a to o so the horizontal movement when you're going from a to o is going to be the same as when you're going from o to b and not just the horizontal movement the vertical movement also okay so just a couple of things you guys need to keep in mind and you can connect this in vector terms also that the vector ao is going to be the same as vector ob because same magnitude and same direction anyway with that out of the way we're going to start off with equation of circles and we are going to start with uh, the proof of what the equation of a circle is so Again, this is not something that uh, that's something you're going to be tested on, like you're not going to be asked to prove it. But, you know, being a level uh, AS level math students or even if you're not an AS level math student, you know, there's, it's always important. It's always, uh, you know, it's always beneficial to know where exactly an equation is coming from. So just like you have the equation of a straight line for which you need the gradient and a point through which the line is passing with the equation of a circle, there are two things that you need. One is the center. You need to know what the center is or where the center of the circle lies and the other important thing as is that you need to know what the radius of the circle is and that's pretty much all we need to know before we draw a circle okay we need to know what the center is and we need to know how much to open our compass which is basically the radius and we uh these are these are the you know key ingredients we need before we make a circle now uh suppose you have a circle on an xy plane okay Let's say it's somewhere over here. Let's say here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. Now here's the center, which I'm gonna call A comma B. And let's take any point on the circumference, which is, which let's say is x comma y. Okay, now the equation of circle is basically expressing the radius in terms of x and y, okay? So how exactly does that work? So let's say, and by the way, the concept that I'm gonna be using here is Pythagoras theorem which again and sort of like the distance formula you know the distance formula is basically an extension of Pythagoras theorem so yeah gotta keep that in mind okay so suppose I want to express this point P in terms of x and y okay so let's see how far off this point is from the center of the circle in terms of a and b and the hypotenuse that I'm drawing over here is basically going to be the radius of the circle Okay, now what if I want to calculate the radius of the circle? So here's how that works. So this distance, the horizontal distance of the point P from the center can be worked out by simply subtracting X and A. So simply subtracting A from X. So that means this distance is going to be 
x minus a. The horizontal distance that you see is going to be x minus a. Now, what about the vertical distance? So let's switch to another color for that. So, you know, this point ends at, I mean, uh, this line ends at y because that's what the y coordinate is. And it starts from, and by the way, the distance I'm talking about is this distance. And it starts at, or it starts from rather, b. So that means the distance of this vertical line is going to be y minus b. So if I just focus on this triangle that I'm highlighting now, this will be a 90 degree triangle. Now let's see what happens if I apply Pythagoras theorem to this, okay? And the reason why I'm do applying Pythagoras theorem, by the way, is so that I can find out what the radius is in terms of x and y. So r square is equal to, now what's, what's the base? This right here is the base, which is x minus a. So that means the square of the base, which is x minus a squared, plus the perpendicular squared. So this right here is basically the perpendicular so plus perpendicular which is y minus b the whole thing square and a nicer way of writing this in most cases you'll find it written like this that x minus a the whole thing square plus y minus b the whole thing squared is equals to r square okay and i should point out that over here the center is a comma b and the radius is r Okay, so these are the two things that you need if you want to find out the equation of a circle. Number one is the center and number two is the radius. Okay, so with this out of the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now jump straight to a few example questions so that, you know, we can further apply what we just learned and, uh, you know, cement this concept. Okay, now, so let me write down before, before we do these questions, let me write down the general form of the equation of a circle. So with center A comma B, and radius r remember that the general form is always going to be x minus a the whole thing squared plus y minus b the whole thing squared equals to r squared so i'm just going to do two examples for you guys i'm going to do part b and part c so in part b here's what we need to do we're going to do x minus 5 the whole thing squared plus y minus minus 2 because that's what the y coordinate of the center is the whole thing squared equals to 4 squared now remember Radius will always be squared in the equation. Okay, so let's write this nicely. So we, we're looking at x minus 5, the whole thing squared, plus y plus 2, the whole thing squared, equals to 16. So this was part A. Actually, no, this was part B. Now let's also do part C and get this out of the way. So in part C, we have center minus 1, comma 3. So that means x minus minus 1. You could have straight away written plus 1. That's up to you. Plus y minus 3, the whole thing squared is equals to root 7 squared. So that means now you're looking at x plus 1, the whole thing squared, plus y minus 3, the whole thing squared equals to 7. And there you go. This is your final answer. I should highlight the final answers. So here's one. Here is another. Okay, now let's do a slightly more complex example. And uh, with this, I'll explain how you can apply the concepts of coordinate geometry. So it says here, find the equation of the circle with center 2 comma 5 passing through the point 6 comma 8. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So one thing that I always recommend, regardless of whether it's AS math or level or whatever, uh, is always to make a rough sketch, okay, so that you have, so that you know exactly what's going on. So 2 comma 5, it means it's going to be somewhere over here. Again, I'm not going to, I'm not paying uh, a lot of attention to the accuracy but you need to get at least the quadrants right okay so 2 comma 5 means that x and y are both in the uh are, are both positive so that means we're in the first quadrant and then 6 comma 8 means that slightly towards the right and slightly above 5 is where we will find 6 comma 8 okay so here's the deal so we have to find the equation of a circle with center 2 5 so this point is the center and it's passing through the point 6 comma 8 so that means if i try and make a circle which uh, has center as mentioned and, and 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 the point is the point b that means we're looking at something that looks like this okay actually let me change the color to something other than black yeah there you go so this is what we're looking at so what does that mean that means the first thing that we require before we can do anything at all uh is the radius uh, actually no first thing we require is the radius because we although we do have the center but we don't know what the radius is so that means if i start forming the equation this is where i will have to stop x minus 2 the whole thing squared plus y minus 5 the whole thing squared now i don't know what r is but can i find out r 
the answer is yes, because radius is basically the distance from the center to any point on the circumference. So I have this point 6, 8 and I have the center 2, 5 given to me by the question. So I just need to apply Pythagoras theorem here and get my hands on the radius. So R square is going to be equal to square root of 6 minus 2, the whole thing squared, plus 8 minus 5, the whole thing squared. So 6 minus 2 is actually there's no need to put a square root here. I should cross that out because we just want R with the square. So 6 minus 2 is 4. The square of 4 is 16. 16 plus uh, 8 minus 5 is 3, the square of 3 is 9, so that means r squared is equal to 16 plus 9, which is basically equal to 25. Now, there's no point in taking the square root of it and then squaring it again, so you just you can just keep it as r squared. So the final answer is x minus 2, the whole thing squared, plus y minus 5, the whole thing squared, equals to 25. And there you go, you have the equation of the circle with the given center and the given point through which it's passing. Okay, so that was one example, some uh, so a very basic example. Now in this, I'm going to do a slightly more complex example. Okay, so again, let's just, since we're dealing with um, points, let's just quickly make an XY plane. So there you go. So it says a diameter of a circle has its end point. So that means these are the points on the circumference A minus 6 comma 8 and B 2 comma minus 4. Now I should highlight the word or underline the word diameter here. So minus six comma eight basically means that somewhere here is going to be minus six and somewhere here we'll have eight and two comma minus four means that somewhere here we'll have two and let's let me extend this line a little somewhere here we'll have minus four. Okay, so this line that you see here, bear in mind is the diameter of a circle. Okay, so keep that in mind. That means, oops, sorry about that. That means if I were to draw a circle, so it's gonna look something like, oh, this is not a perfect circle, but you guys get the point, hopefully. Yeah, huh, not bad, okay. So this is what a circle will look like that has uh, minus six comma eight and two comma minus four as its endpoints. And now what we have to do is, what you and I have to do is, we have to find the equation of the circle, okay. so. Let's see, let's first see what exactly do we need and uh, how much of that is given and how much of uh, what's not given can be worked out by you and I. So we need the center, which means we have to find the midpoint, okay? So there's no getting away from that. So the midpoint, so why exactly are we finding out the midpoint? Because, you know, the center will be exactly in between the two endpoints because these aren't just any points, these are the endpoints of the diameter. So let's uh, work out the midpoint. So minus six plus two and eight plus minus four upon two. So minus six plus two is minus four. Minus four divided by two is minus two. Yep. Eight plus minus four is four. Four divided by two is two. So I have the center. Okay. I should point out that this point that you see is the center. Now what we need is the radius. Now there are two ways you can get the radius. You can either work out the diameter and then divide by two, or you can. Um, use any one of these two points, A or B, and uh, the other point that you can use is M, which is the center, and then find the distance of these two points, which will directly give you the radius. Now, I'm, I'm gonna go with AB. So, AB squared is equal to two minus minus six, the whole thing squared, plus minus four minus eight, the whole thing squared. So, AB squared, or AB rather, let's work out the diameter, is gonna be equal to two minus minus six, which is eight, square of eight is going to be 64. And then four uh, minus four minus eight is going to be minus 12, the square of which is going to be 144. So that's where it's out, 144 plus 64 is 208. That means AB is equals to square root of 208. And then here's what I'm going to do, uh, square root of the answer. So square root of 208, and then I'm going to divide by two. So AB upon two, which is basically the radius. Okay, so I should write the radius here. So the radius of this circle is basically two under root 13. All right, now let's put all the ingredients together and get, get the equation. So x minus minus two, the whole thing squared, plus y minus two, the whole thing squared, equals to two under root 13, the whole thing squared. And yes, uh, we're gonna square two and the root 13. So now we're looking at x plus two squared, plus y minus two squared, equals to four, because that's what the square of two is, and root 13 squared is 13. So four times 13 is 26, 52. 
Yep, so there you go. This is your final answer. I should probably drag this down because it's getting slightly messy. Yep, there you go. So that brings me to the end of this video. In the next video, I will do some more complex examples and we will also do some fast forward questions because conceptually, there's not much that uh, that you have in this concept, okay? We will uh, at some point encounter equation of tangent and stuff like that. So I'll see you then. And that's all for this video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.